Hi, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. This week's video is entitled A is for Acorn, and it's the second block in my fall quilt. I am currently learning how to use EQ Stitch, and I hope you will join me in the process. For our next block in the fall embroidery slash applique quilt, we're going to do an acorn. And I went on the internet and I found a free clip art uh, image and I brought that into one of my image files so I could use it for tracing. And so I'm going to go to the work on block, which I am there, but I'm going to do a block, new block, and a patch draw motif. And I'm going to go to the tracing image tab and let me just delete this and I'm going to import the image and I'm going to navigate to wherever I saved the image on my website so I had it in my my EQ images and I'm going to say open and then I'll do OK and OK and then I'll click on the space and it will fill in my acorn so now I'm gonna go to my applique tab and I am going to use the BZA tool. And I like that because I can draw basically some gentle curves and I try to not have a lot of points. So every time I start and stop basically creates a node or a point. So for this part of the acorn, I basically have three nodes that have been combined. Now all of the rest I do with cleanup. So I'm going to select the shape tool and I'm going to start by selecting that node on the bottom. And you can see in the properties toolbar here there are all these different options for editing an applique shape. Um, one of them is to make a node smooth. Now notice that we're actually on the corner at the moment which means that both um, both handles move independently. Whereas if I had a smooth, when I move one handle, notice that the other one moves with it. So I'm going to make this bottom smooth. And let me move that over so I can bring that in. And I really want these two other nodes to be um, basically corner nodes and that's what they are. So now I just need to move the handles to control the space a little better. And I'm actually going to bring this up into the cap of the apron, acorn. Um, so when I layer them I will have this underneath. And I can always add more nodes, but I always make it a personal challenge to create a shape with as few of nodes as possible. And so I think that's going to work for the first um, first shape. And then for the second one, I'm going to use the BZA tool again, and I'm going to do a click here, drag to the top, click, drag to this side, and then click to finish. So I had four nodes here. Now again I'll use that shape tool. I'm going to start with a smooth on that one. I may end up changing that. And then And I don't have to get this exact because remember this is my acorn, um, but you know I know that it would be pleasing if I can um, make it look somewhat consistent. Okay, so now I'm going to select one of the other arcs here, and you can see both handles show up. And I do like this particular node touching the curve on the next. Uh, on that bottom part of the acorn. 
and I'm going to do the same there. And this one is going to be on top, so I want to make sure that I like the I like the curve there. And then for the last one, again with the BZR tool, just one, two, three, four. And everything else is clean up. And I think I'm going to leave all of these at corner. Okay, and I'm going to select and pick um, the t that top of that acorn, and I am going to send that to the back because I want that on the back. So now I can go to my color tab, and I can look and see if I think that is acceptable, and if so, I can go ahead and I can color it. And once I've colored it, I can add it to the sketchbook. Now I'm going to go to the Work on Stitching tab. And I'm going to create a new stitching document. So I'm going to do Stitching, New Design, and I'm going to embroider this. So I will select Embroidery. and. I'm going to go back to my block tab and I'm going to select this design and the best way to do that is I'm going to take that pick tool I'm going to do a control A which you can see they're all highlighted now and I'm going to do a copy which is control C and I'm going to go back to stitch and I'm going to do a paste which is a control V I'm going to hide show image for tracing so we can't see the tracing image and I need to resize this so I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to do the resize and this way I can get the horizontal and vertical exactly the same uh, I think I'm going to try 60 percent and I'll click on OK now I can move this into place I can also use the control key and click on my shape and I've got the arrows to rotate that are now show up and I can um, move that in place and I am going to add that to the sketchbook. And the reason I'm doing that is, is I want to pick up the A that I did last, uh, last week and bring that in, and that's in another stitch file. So anyway, I'm going to view my sketchbook. I'm going to stitching. Um, I'm going to go to the, um, my words or that I did last, last week. I'm going to edit that. I'm going to take the A and I'm going to copy that. Control plus C and I'm then going to view the sketchbook. I'm going to pick up my um, acorn that I'm working on and I'm going to do the control V and I've now moved the A here. Now that needs to be resized as well so I'm going to right click, resize and um, I'm going to try 200% for that one. And I'll click on OK. And I think that's actually a little small, so I'm going to resize again. And now um, I'm going to do 120%. And I think I like that. I'm going to move that a little bit further away. And now I am ready to apply stitches. So I'm going to go to my Stitch tab. 
I will use my set thread tool to set the thread both for the edge stitches and the fill stitches. Now that's the guts, but I want to make some adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, set edge stitch and I'm going to start with that A and I'm going to adjust my width to 1.5. So that's going to make that a little bit smaller, which is going to allow some of that background to um, come, uh, come through. And I'm going to do the same thing on the um, each of the other outline stitches there. Now, for the acorn, I am going to change the fill stitch as well. So I'm going to do the do a set fill stitch uh, for the bottom of the acorn. I'm going to do this corduroy. So I'm going to select it. I'll click on and I would like to rotate that a bit so I can sort of follow the line of the acorn. So I'm going to adjust the ankle, angle and I'll select 45 and then click on it and notice that um, the angle of the stitch has now, now been adjusted. Now for um, the, the hat on that acorn and for this one, I'm going to use the, set, the thatched basket stitch. And so I'll click on the thatched basket and then click on that. And I like that. So um, I'm going to make a couple more changes to coloring. And now I'm going to test my stitch out. So I will click on the simulate sewing. I would like to make some changes to that acorn. I'd like to do the inside browns together and then do the outside. And so I'm going to um, do a couple of changes. And one is, is we'll go ahead and start with the A. So I want to move that to the bottom. And now I'm going to move the bottom of the acorn down one space. So I'm going to re-go through the stitching. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to the sketchbook. And I am going to export my stitching file and bring it to my embroidery machine. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to receive more videos and electric quilt tips, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com.